Okay, so that was using the phrase loop function of the GT10, which is an incredible amount of fun. Uh, so let's have a look at setting the different phrase loop functions up. To enter the menu for the phrase loop, you need to press system and then use the cursor or the value wheel to get to the phrase loop page and press enter. Now there's a, a bunch of different parameters here that you can change uh, to basically tailor the loop to what you want. Now, um, first of all, the two different modes. There's performance mode, which is what you just saw there where I was basically playing one part and layering more and more parts over each other. Now, uh, as I change sounds during performance mode, the sounds that I've already recorded aren't changing as well. They're staying the same as I recorded with the initial loop. Uh, whereas if I was to change it to patch edit mode, every loop that I've recorded will then change and update with the new sound that I changed to. So as we touched on earlier, patch edit mode is great for if you're you know, creating a, a new patch and you basically want to, um, in fact, let's just have a look at that. Let's uh, quickly record something in. So by default, if you push both bank buttons at the same time, it turns the loop on. Now. Let's just ch uh, quickly record something. So, so now that's playing. I can start. I can start changing parameters, and um, it, you know it's really handy when you're creating a new tone rather than continuing, you know, playing, changing something playing a bit more, changing something, it just makes the whole process a lot easier because you can keep the loop playing and basically um, you can hear the changes made instantly without having to keep going back to the guitar and playing. So let me just uh, play around with a few parameters and you can, you can hear how that's working. It's really handy for auditioning different preamps.
really, really good also for trying out different effects. If you're not sure what certain effects do, for instance, let's uh, turn on effects block one and then we'll toggle through a few, diff a few different effects. You get the idea. So that's basically patch edit mode, which allows you to uh, just play something in and either be editing patches or, as I mentioned earlier, great for when you want to balance levels on your GT10 and you want to jump out the front of the PA um, and have someone change your patches while you're playing out the front and uh, hearing how your levels uh, change. So let's uh, let's just go back into the phrase loop and have a look at the other parameters. So. Performance mode is where I was layering the different uh, tones over the top of each other. Now, uh, you've got your pedal on, on off. Now, you can actually assign this to, say, a controller. Rather than pressing both bank buttons at the same time, you can toggle it on using any of the onboard controllers. You know, I prefer to just leave it set to its default of the bank and use the, the control pedals for other uh, better uses. Then you've got uh, whether the record mode is in mono or stereo. Now the stereo record mode is um, 19 seconds, but it allows you to utilize, you know, if you're using pan and uh, modulation effects, stereo delays and reverbs, you know, you're hearing the recorded stereo effect. Whereas if you've got it set to mono, you won't. The benefit of using mono though, is that you get 38 seconds of record time. So, you know, uh, it's up to you whether you want to go for the quality effects if you just want shorter loops, or if you want longer loops, stick to the mono and that'll give you 38 seconds. The play level is the, uh, the playback level of what you've just recorded. So um, if you want the playback level to be you know, louder than what you just played physically, then you will set this to more than 100. Setting it to below 100 makes the playback level softer than the actual uh, physical play. So 100 is about unity, which is around about the same level that you actually physically played it at the time. Now, the, the clear pedal function uh, basically allows you to uh, use the bank up button while you've got a loop playing to either just mute the signal temporarily and then you can uh, get the signal playing again by hitting the down bank button which will basically start playback from where it's up to within the loop um, whereas if you've got it set to clear only when you hit the bank up button it'll totally clear the loop so it won't mute it so you can't restart the loop it'll totally clear it and um, have you ready to to basically record another loop so the way I set it up is to have it set to mute clear so that I can mute it first. So if I'm playing the loop, I can mute the, the signal. And then if I want, I'll just press it a second time to totally clear the loop out. Um, so that's pretty much it with the uh, the phrase loop. It's it's a pretty cool thing. Um, so let's, let's just have a look at a, a few more um, examples of uh, different sounds and, and uh, things that you can do. Okay, so I just want to show you a few things that I've got set up here for this looping demonstration. Now, you'll notice I've got a little uh, player recorder here. Um, I'm just using that to, to run a, a basic drum loop into the GT10, which I will record. Um, I've just got to plug straight into the uh, external effects loop there, and I've basically just initialized the patch. So there's, there's nothing, there's no effects blocks are on or anything within this patch. The only thing that's on is the send return loop. So um, hence the name pass through, it's just basically passing the signal directly through so that the phrase loop can capture the sound. Now, uh, if I wanted to, I could put effects on the drum loop, but uh, I choose not to for this uh, demonstration. So the trick with looping here is to engage the, the loop to start recording on the first downbeat of the drum beat. Now, I want it to go for four bars, so I want to disengage the loop on the first downbeat of the, 
the next loop, which will be the fifth loop. So, uh, you know, it can take a little bit of practice to get get the pedal punching in and out. It's much easier to do with your foot actually than it is with your hand. But um, anyway, so let's let's have a look at um, a little bit of a looping looping thing here. So I'm going to start the drums. One, two, three, four, two, two, three, four, three, two, three, four, four, two, three, four, five. Okay. So I've got my drums looping and they should loop pretty well. So from there I can just go to another patch and press the record and I'm armed ready to record another loop. So let's have a look. that for a sec because I just want to explain something. Now, because I've got the bank button set up to record with, I can't bank up and down into different patches. So I need to use the uh, the scroll wheel to do that. I can ac access the four patches that I've got currently in this bank, but if I was to use the bank up and down buttons, it's going to either clear the loop or um, put it into a different record mode. So for the purposes here, I'm just going to scroll down to uh, another bank and let's uh, Commence playback. Okay, record something else. And then you can just keep that looping. I've just got it set to playback now, so I can solo over it. 